take two on the welcome, welcome, welcome because of Travis. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Brad, for being here. I am very excited to have you on the show. I know you're a little nervous, but I think you're gonna do phenomenal. I oh, appreciate it, thank you. So first, real quick, let's just do the typical introduction um, of who you are and what you do, and give me one interesting fact about you. So my name is Brad White. I am an owner at Rolly White RV, uh, RV dealership here in the Valley in Idaho. Um, right, because you guys are Mesa, Phoenix, and Idaho, right? Mesa, Phoenix, and Flagstaff. Flagstaff, that was the mm -hmm. other one. I was like, I knew there was one more. Yep. So that's my main thing that I do. And interesting fact. Um, Give me I, something good. So this month, I'm celebrating September, so tomorrow, mm -hmm. celebrating 15 years off hardcore drugs and being homeless. So Damn. I'm pretty excited about that. Okay. Weird. I actually didn't know that. <laughs> a lot of people don't. And it's something that I'm actually, <clears throat> I'm doing a talk tomorrow at a ranch where they, it's a drug rehabilitation center. So yeah. I'm excited about it because I'm, I've been spending, you know, I work, 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 yeah. and life, kids, all that stuff. And I've always wondered how can I do something to share my experiences and help people. So tomorrow will be my first time sharing my story. Oh my God. Okay. So for the listeners, that, so. this was not planned. I Whoa. swear to God. <laughs> I yeah. swear this was not planned. That is so awesome of you. Congratulations. 15 yeah. years. That's yeah, a big deal. You. It is a big deal. I know yeah. when people get like a couple months in or a year in, it's a little shaky. Did you ever have choppy moments leading up to getting your first year? Or were you like day one through? No real choppy moments. I think it was so bad that I was just done with it. Oh, so okay. once I made that decision, it was not easy, but it wasn't something that I was looking looking back on. And I, I tell people all the time, like, it must be way harder to be like an alcoholic or something because <clears throat> when I go to a restaurant, like when I stop, it's just, it's over. Like I'm not, yeah. I'll go to the restaurant and be like, hey, would you like to sample the meth today? <laughs> like, or walk into a gas station scoot forward. and it's like, everywhere and on billboard yeah like, it's so, not like you're going to subway and getting a side of heroin right you know so i kind of walked out of that life and well it's over now i'm not being honest. so being away from it was easy in i see what you mean though term. about the alcohol like with alcohol it's everywhere i mean it's i literally everywhere. offered it to you earlier. Yeah, yeah so <laughs> it's just i've not that i'm alcoholic but that would be really hard right because yeah it's like you're trying to do this but everywhere you go you're being offered hey you want to do it, you do it? like so I could see that being a lot harder. Yeah, I have a few friends, uh, one that you're friends with as well, that's obviously does not drink. and we, But we all know, but people that don't just offer him, and he's always like, no, no, no. But it's the people that take the next step of, but why? And it's like, just yeah, don't. There's a reason. Yeah, there's always a reason. And yeah. I hate when people are like, but why? And like, I don't know why people feel the need to fucking do that. People just don't want to drink. There's times I don't want to drink. I mean, hell, I've have living proof that I went nine months both times without doing it. Yeah, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> no, but um, that's amazing. Thank you. So yeah, where is this event going to be at? So <clears throat> there's a ranch. Um, it's, and I don't know, it's out in Queen Creek, but end of Val Vista. It's a dude ranch, if you will. They do horses, all kinds of stuff, but they bring guys out of prison or off drugs, and it's a two-year program. Okay. And they go through this program, <laughs> and when they come out of it, they kind of just teach them about life, how to work hard, how to be, you know, do all these different things. So, I've actually seen a couple of TikToks like, like yeah. that. They um, bring prisoners to work in horse ranches. And they yeah. literally yeah. clean up horse so taking care of the horse and taking care of, like, just have responsibilities and all these things. And as they get to certain stages, then they can do different things and whatnot. So That's amazing. Um, I don't think he'll mind me telling, but Robbie that works with us. Mm -hmm. um, yes, I know Robbie. So he actually came out of that ranch and started working with us. So he worked. Wow, I would have never guessed because he's like so chill and normal. Yeah, so this is kind of where it all kind of developed for me because Robbie and I have a lot in common. And mm -hmm. for me, <clears throat> motorcycles is like a huge outlet. Bikes, oh, yeah. bicycles, just that in general. That's where I turn to for when I'm feeling. And then time I was like, I'm going to go use drugs. But like. Oh my gosh, I'm stressed out. Or I'm the, I get on my bike and it's over. Like, 
I agree. Goes away. So, Riding on a bike is definitely huge, especially when you have an oh shit moment and you're like, yeah, <laughs> yeah it's like that same route. Like, whoa, it's almost like being high. <laughs> Makes you feel human again. <laughs> yeah. And so Robbie was really <clears throat> kind of what got me thinking in this direction because he came in, he started at the very bottom with us and he's, I got him into mountain biking. He had never done that before and got him into going to the dunes with us. And yeah. now he's, and he's worked his way up. He's such a hard worker. Yeah, he is. He's really hard a go getter. So like on his own accord, he did all these things. He has a home, like doing all these things. And I, I've been looking at that the last, it's probably been about five years and saying, well, it, we did not set out to do that with Robbie. It just happened. naturally organically happened. And it's like, I, was, I, I want to do that with some, I want to help somebody else. So my idea is I'm going to go talk at this and over the next few months kind of come up with a plan on how. <clears throat> bring another guy in from there. Bring another guy in, <clears throat> offer him a job. I, I'll provide him a bike in some sort and then we will, we're already going riding every, you know, a bunch of guys mm -hmm. work, we ride, we do all those things. And it's like, hey, just come along and he'll just network himself into, it's just a positive group of people. Everybody's Correct. doing yeah. something cool. And then he'll just. Now, when Ryan after. has rode uh, dirt bikes with you, it's definitely, he's like, man, it's just so different. They really get after it, but it's not like competing. It's just very like natural and very fun. Yeah. And your group is very legit, no, you know, type a, of guys. Yeah. So like <clears> Ryan, <throat> in motorcycles, like the, the bond, right? I'm, mm -hmm. I, I always have that joke. Like me and my wife will be somewhere and we're talking to somebody. It's like some couple. Yeah. We're totally like not hitting it off. It's like. Wait, you ride dirt bikes? Oh, <laughs> now I'm sales? interested. Are we best friends? <laughs> yeah, really is. Okay. I think a lot of people who ride, we inst instantly connect on it because it is this weird bond that it's really unexplainable. And a lot of our friends that we have rode with, we've been friends with like most of our lives. Yeah. And it's crazy to think that just something like that, that people think are so dangerous and so crazy that really bonds a lot of us together. It really does. It's, I mean, I don't know how many, most of the people in my life, are evolved in some way around bicycles, motorcycles, and they're mm -hmm. all just amazing people. I, I don't know. Love so another myself. thing with riding, you race Baja. Yeah. Which is something that I know a lot of people race Baja or that, you know, do the cars, which are class ones cars or, you know, those little buggies or whatever. Those are tough. I mean, they really beat the shit out of your kidneys and your body. Oh. But riding a bike – in Baja is no easy feat. And I've done little races before in deserts and stuff. And this is like a pin drop of what Baja is. So what made you wake up and go, you know what? I love riding dirt bikes, but I'm going to just take it to the next level and damn near die, but I'm going to do this. So somewhat of a long story. My dad growing up, he <clears throat> was an engine builder. So he built engines for different off-road teams and stuff. And oh, nice. he would take me down there as a kid because he was helping out with the team or whatever. Mm -hmm. And as a kid, I was just mesmerized by the motorcycles. I was just like, oh, that's so cool. I would love to do this someday. And <clears throat> so it's always been something that I've always wanted to do. And then with the drug thing and stuff and then work, it just kind of was out of reach. Yeah. And then pro so I'm 41 now. I think the first time I raced was 38. I was 38. And I'd Damn, and most people there, start yeah, earlier. Way earlier, right? Yeah. So we'd go down there just to enjoy it and ride in general. But then we were down there one year, and my friends like, let's just do it. And I was like, dude, I've always wanted to do it. Let's do it. So we just kind of said, hey, next year we're going to do it. And that was – so I was 38. We went and did it. And the whole goal was just to finish. I mean, can we yeah. just get – just get through the finish line, line yeah. Right. It's and not be one of those tragedy pages. Let's just get there. Let's just get there. Take your time. Doesn't matter. We The whole goal and just, hey, I want to say I did it. That's it. Yeah. And so we finished, <clears throat> and timing and scores had us in third place. And so we're like, wow, that's, that's pretty cool. We're pretty proud of ourselves. Right? Yeah, that's a well, huge deal. We wake up the next morning, and we were actually got second place due to – Wow. Uh, yeah. E well, penalties, penalties and, and, and all mm -hmm. that stuff. So then we left there and thought, oh, man. So the guys I ride with were 40 already. 
And so I was there. So I said, well, hey. I'll, How many people were on your team? Or did you have the? Two, two other guys. Oh, I mean, wow. So three total. Yeah. And you guys split it up by the miles? Yeah. We got down there and just rode and then just kind of said, who feels comfortable where? And then we just divided it up. But yeah. Yeah. That's kind of the idea. And then <clears throat> so I said, well, let's wait till I turn 40 and let's race the 40 pro class. And that's yeah. what we do, you know. So that's what we did this year. Um, and then we had a bunch of injuries. Like Clay broke his shoulder. I saw. I was watching the updates stuff. and yeah. stuff. And then Mike <laughs> broke his ankle the day, like two days before the race. And so that left us with two people, me and another guy, to mm-hmm. race the whole thing. And we did good. We got second, finished. and but Yeah, your yeah, wife was on was edge. She was one. like, <laughs> we were all on edge, I feel like, just watching the needle, the score update on everything. It was just, oh, my God, it's nerve-wracking. So, yeah, being, I'll say, that old. <laughs> yeah, just... It's a huge accomplishment. It was, it was a lot for me, and so it was awesome. But really, how did, how did your body feel the next day? <laughs> you know, it wasn't too bad. I think it's more leading up to it, the training during the week and all this. Like, the actual race, I mean, luckily we overprepared, I would say, Yeah. physically. So the actual race was, I mean, it was tough because Mike dropped out right the last minute, so we had to ride double what we were planning. So that last half was bad, but it wasn't. It wasn't crazy. Was this the race where you guys started in, like, the middle of the night again or, like, early, early dawn? Yeah, so the race, I believe, started at 4 a.m. So we yeah, so you two. can't see shit until. Yeah. <laughs> and it's by the ocean, so it's, like, foggy. Yeah. So that first rider just <clears throat> is dust and goggles or mud. And Oh, my uh, God. Crazy, so. I can't imagine. Yeah, I just had Stephanie on um, recently, and she was telling me about her Baja. I don't think you raced the year that she raced with uh, two other people on a dirt bike. And she was telling me some funny stories on here of just this the sand hill or the silt box, basically oh, yeah. the pit of hell. It's unreal. <laughs> Did you guys get stuck up there too? So I ran through uh, the first year I raced. I, towards the finish, I ran through a silt bed, and I mean it's like riding through water. quicksand, basically, like, it's like almost water. You're looking down, and you can just see half of your wheel. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, and then you're hitting rocks that you can't see. So it's like, <clears throat> it's it's pretty intense. But, yeah. I mean, it's unreal. Ryan um, has had many experiences in being trapped down there <laughs> yeah, yeah, in trucks. Been, yeah, um, sure. So that's that's definitely one that always is a bike killer. Um, those long stretches are perfect for the bikes, but some of those technical stuffs where usually trucks can get out, bikes just can't. Yeah. So even maneuverings through stuff like that, it's just crazy doing stuff like that. Yeah. Are you going to do it next year? So we're gonna <clears throat> we were gonna race this whole season. We raced the two fifty, five hundred, mm-hmm. and we're gonna do the four hundred, one thousand. But with those guys getting hurt and some stuff. Yeah, especially with the thousand, you're gonna need what, like at least four guys minimum. Yeah, to and make probably it through more that. for us, yeah. Yeah. So we decided it's actually been recently we pulled the plug and gonna do the five hundred next year. I for me, I mean it's a big feat. I now this there's like this drive to win. And so it's like, you're almost there. Let's just go. Like, yeah. Let's just keep. So, but I've told my wife and I've told like, this is a, like one more shot. We'll see what we can do. And if it works great, if it doesn't, we're, it's over. You're done. Yeah. Would you see yourself racing anything with like a cage? For sure. <clears throat> yeah. And it's funny. Ryan, Ryan's like, like, Hey, if you need anybody with the cage, like, <laughs> cause I'm like, he's always knows that yeah. has the connections. Yeah. So that <laughs> is like already in the works burning, you know? Yeah. Not I can so see much you in the works, that. but you something like it's hard to stop once you once you do it's it. You know? yeah. I mean, the only reason Ryan and I stopped because we were super young, got broke, Navy, family, and all that. So, oh, but yeah. I can't imagine starting over and racing now. Yeah. I think we would just drive each other crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> it, it is a lot. It's a lot with just like the training for it, and I'm, you know, at the gym every day, or and then from there work, and then riding, and. It's, it's a lot on my wife, too, with the kids and, and everything. Too. Oh, I can so imagine. It's a, it's a whole thing. Stressful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm even stressed out, like, when I watch the needle. Like, yeah. On the yeah. like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just don't get run over. Yeah, and that's another thing. Like, uh, <coughs> when I was younger, being hurt or d- it never really mm-hmm. bothered me, you know. But now kids have totally changed me in that aspect. I'm thinking, like, man, I... It'd be horrible to get paralyzed or something and not be mm-hmm. able to do all the things I want to do with my kids, you know. And that's ways in the back of my mind, and it kind of it's 
I don't want to say it's a bummer, but it's definitely yeah. back there. And That's why I sold of, my dirt bike. Yeah. I, I sold it last year. I just, I got injured in a stupid way and I just, I couldn't get over it. And even though I've been injured in the past, it wasn't a big deal with the kids. Kids are getting older and they were unfortunately there when I got really hurt. And that, that was it for me. I yeah. was done. Yep. And I never want to have my kids feel like their mom's gone. Um, sure. Especially when it happened in front of them. So I had to make that step. But I know people are like, oh, isn't riding a Harley more, you know, dangerous? In a way it is, but I am a thousand times more comfortable on my Harley than definitely in, in the dunes or the desert. It's just unforgivable out there. I mean, not saying that con- hitting concrete, you know, at 100 miles an hour is any better, but it, it's just, I don't know why it's just different. Do you feel like it is different for you too? It is different. Uh, it's different in the opposite for me though, because... I haven't ridden Harleys as much. Mm-hmm. So all the cars around me and all like it makes you nervous. It is intimidating to me. And then the bike is totally different from a dirt bike. So it's, it's a little bit out of my element, but I, yeah. I enjoy it. And I try to do rides like me and Ryan, when I ride like mm-hmm. in the evening and we're like going to a lake where maybe it's less crowd, kind of try to avoid the cars as yeah. much as possible. Um, <clears throat> as I get more comfortable with it. I was the same way. Like when I was first riding my FXR, I think we pretty much just did the outer 202 for a while until I was like, okay, I think I've gotten it down. And then the other problem is is I didn't have a windshield. So I'm just full face, just blasted the entire time, just freaking out. And then I kept thinking, is this how it normally is? Because this is ridiculous. Yeah, why do you do this? (laughs) I know. (laughs) And then I was like ready to sell the damn thing. And then my husband was like, no, 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 no. It's because you don't have a windshield. I'm like, mm. but I always see guys ride without one. So I'm like, how? he's like, they just don't care. I'm like, I care. That was terrible. Yeah. Um, well, it's awesome that you ride. And that you guys can do that together. And- yeah. Yeah. And the only time you will catch me not being okay where I back off um, on an off ramp. Well, not an off ramp, but uh, you know with the freeways how they change so if you're going to the 202 to the 101 and you have to take the long curve i don't know why but i say even though i can do it just fine it psychs me out and i pull back a little bit but i take my time because i know it's like the kids thing right in the back of my mind Mm -hmm. i don't have that shithead mentality of just i'm just gonna grip it and whip it and just go i just i don't have that when it comes to that and then mountains i mean even though i did million dollar highway and i pretty much white knuckled (laughs) Yeah. Oh, yeah. I it's not something I'm giddy up and going to do again, you know, like constantly. It's definitely that was one of my fears for sure. And mm-hmm. I feel like that's normal because I didn't grow up riding Harleys either. I was just straight dirt bikes, yeah. dunes, desert stuff. So um Harleys is different and there is some things, but I at least with Harleys, I can just say I'm not comfortable with this. Either I'll pull back or I just get on the back of Ryan's. Yeah, yeah. And it's just for me it's the outside. <laughs> stuff going on around like out in the desert generally it's just me or maybe True. somebody i've ridden with yeah for years and we're really comfortable at those speeds together and then you come out ride a harley somewhere around here and it's like well you, you know 16 year old drives by or like you know yeah. or i know how i drive and i'm like <laughs> i am <laughs> I'm like oh crap i apologize i, I am I guilty ride. as yeah. fuck too and i try not to be because i am super that's why i remind people loud pipes save lives because i tell you what i will be dicking around on my phone but if i hear that pipe i am perking up and i'm looking and i try to do that too because i'm i motorcycle so i like try to be courteous you know just get out of the way let them over yeah oh i do i'm the first one to always pull over to the side and let them go mm -hmm. every time and when i see little dickhead karens that are pulling in in the way i will slam on my horn and like go ape shit on them because that's how motorcyclists die absolutely and people don't understand that and they get it's like this weird jealousy that i can't understand like they're jealous and they're so upset and triggered by a harley passing them i don't get it it drives me nuts and it's like they don't understand and they're like oh well they're driving fast and they don't get it we need to be in front of you or away from you the longer that our bike stays around you that's how we get hit and they don't get it. I will see comments on Facebook or something about a rider down or whatever. And they're like, that's what they fucking get. And I'm like, really? what the hell? That's oh, crazy. I see that shit all the time. Or they get, oh, well, I always see them doing that. And like, it doesn't matter. Like, just chill. 
The moment you get in our way or pull the whole jerk the steering wheel in front of a rider and we go down, trust me, our whole family is coming after you. And it's just, it's a sickening feeling. I know everybody feels like that, but I do see some comments on social media like that. That's just like, man, those people are just out to kill us and they don't understand. Yeah. What's that yeah. obsession of a just jealousy? It just seems like that. It's having too much fun. I know. And like, we don't really ride like that bad. I mean, of course, I've had moments with G, of course, and Ryan <laughs> and some of our friends where I'm like, okay, that was, <laughs> we were cooking it the whole yeah. time. <laughs> Ryan gets after it. Oh, we got when we got done, both my friends that were with us on the ride. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, that's right. That ride. Up. Like they're both Ryan or uh, Mike races with me. Mm-hmm. And then Jason's been riding Harley's his whole life, you know, and we got done like yeah, these guys rip. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, they dude, do. We were going. Yeah. If you yeah. ever want if to if they ever want to go again on a good ride, he's always the first phone call. And then yeah. unfortunately, Josh at RPM made him his bike too fast. Mm. So that's why he was probably really ripping it because he had just got it back oh, around yeah. that time. And, and it, was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. It was like, oh, here, we're going. All right. <laughs> What's well, so funny when I ride with him? I want to see the scenery. Yeah. But when I ride with him, I'm like, <laughs> it's just hold the fuck on. Forget about the scenery. Yeah, we're just going to get there. So sometimes there's some friends that do like like what I like. I want to see stuff sometimes. Yeah. And then those rides, I'm like, oh, this is nice. <laughs> I get to actually see shit. Awesome. Normally, I just see blur. It's just the lines. Oh, God. But I will say, riding with Ryan and some of our friends, they have taught me a lot on um, reading cars. This is something I was just explaining to a new writer um, a couple weeks ago. Because he asked, how do you feel comfortable riding on freeways and getting around cars? And I said, you know what's the biggest tip I ever got, especially from Ryan, is read a car like you would a human. So you know how we have like certain body languages that you're going to kind of predict what we're going to do. Cars are kind of the same way. It's so weird. You can literally stare at a car for a couple seconds and I will definitely predict if they're going to be making some sketchy turns before it it comes down to if I can see them in the car, if they've been jerking back and forth a little bit, if I feel like I've seen them look over, I sense and can read them and I can tell and shit you not how many times I've avoided a car coming right into us. Because I was reading the body language, no turn indicator, and just turning. And I'm like, dude, I saw that shit coming. It's just... Or if you see an Ultima that's all beat up, just stay the fuck away from that thing. (laughs) (laughs) Or how many times we've seen Dodge Chargers with, like, mismatching paint and fucked up... Like, just stay away from those cars. We see those on the highway, and we're like, nope. You know what? Just fucking go. (laughs) It makes sense. I've never thought of it that way, but yeah, yeah. it it has really helped me a lot and like kind of eased my panic because I started out like that too, where I was like, I just didn't want anyone around me, but yeah, I I have that problem with a lot of things. Like it's it's human error that scares me. Mm -hmm. And that's where like skydiving, I was like, Oh, let's go sky. I'm like, I'm not skydiving. Like, and it's not even because you're relying on a fucking human to jump out of the plane or I'm the heights. It's the like packing the chute or the, yeah, yeah just, how do you know that shoe is packed yeah, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> so, it just for me, it's it's that same thing Trust. on the surface streets. Yeah. Yeah, I don't blame you. I think there's a lot more that are like you than you think. I've yeah. had some conversations with guys before that are like, sometimes you get a gut feeling if you're about to leave the house, and I've had this happen before, and I will literally tell Ryan, "I don't want to ride today. You just have fun." And then he'll call me and be like, dude, you fucking called it. Today was crazy. This happened, this happened, this happened. And I'm like, see, I just, if you ever get a gut feeling like this, take it and stay home. It's so weird. Yeah. Well, the more you bring that up, the older I've gotten, the more I listen to those things. Like mm-hmm. where we, even dirt bike riding, we get there, oh, you forgot this or you forgot that. And it's like, meh, we're just going. Yeah. And now it's like, should we really? That might be a reason. Let's just get out of here. Yeah, so. we've definitely uh, had some issues where, you know, shit's broken and we're like, fuck, I could have saw this coming yeah, because <laughs> of yeah. how the day's gone. But yeah, definitely just be more in tune with that. And I feel like some days you'll feel like, yes, today's a good ride. And I've had those days where I'm like, dude, today was the most beautiful, perfect day of riding. Nothing could have went wrong. And then there's other days I have that sense and I bail out and I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I always tell people, who cares what other people think? If you don't feel like fucking writing, fuck them. It's yeah. not a big deal. Yeah. I don't have anything to impress or, you know, guys have seen me ride 
for the last couple of years now and know that I know my shit. So if I just get that feeling, it's okay. It's yeah. not a big deal. Um, yeah. Like, just the other day, I really didn't want to ride to Cave Creek, and it was funny when our friend was like, oh, yeah, we're not going to ride either. And I was like, oh, my God, is I really didn't want to ride. Because <laughs> so I was just getting that feeling. It was kind of still hot, and it just... Yeah. I got that feeling, so I was so glad that they bailed out on riding, too, yeah. and we just drove instead. Yeah, perfect. Oh, and I was like, you know, it's moments like these where it's like, it's okay to say no and that you didn't yeah. want to ride. Yeah. <laughs> it's all good. Well, what is, um, what is one of your crazy stories while riding a dirt bike that you have? There's so many, you know. <laughs> okay, Glamis. Glamis, so I, I try to ride early in the morning and try mm -hmm. to ride, so I don't have... Anything that's like, so you would say most years are like desert, crazy. yeah, desert stuff, or you know where you you crash and it's just you come off at a high speed and you get up and you don't. It's like I don't even know where my motorcycle's at, and you're. Did just, you eat it pretty bad in Baja? Where? So no, I I've been very fortunate down there to where I haven't really had anything crazy. I had I went to Colorado and rode. I got into single track riding mm -hmm. right the last couple of years, and with desert riding, you don't really worry about. The hand guards and stuff. So I have flags yeah. just for bushes and mm -hmm. cactus and stuff, but not actual like the actual steel that bar that comes the, around, right? Yeah. And so I got the single track bike, and I just put the flags on, not really thinking about it, you know. And so we're riding, and I don't know where I hit a tree that was like cut down. It's probably like <laughs> six foot. It just like knocked the the bars. I didn't fall off or anything, but it was like when you get you know punched in the arm or something. It's like oh, I kind of hurt. And it kind of lingered. And then in these three knuckles, it was like, oh, well, these started going away. These started, but my pinky just like kept on hurrying. I'm like, why is that? And I finally got into a corner and looked down, and my finger was like over here. Oh, <laughs> I was like, oh, no. <laughs> but we're still riding. So I'm like, I don't, I don't. And you start, I'm like, I don't know what to do. Like, this is going to suck. So we stop. Yeah, you don't want to get amputated. Yeah, and it was like, so this knuckle is dislocated, and this was broke all the way way up here can't see it but my friend grabs a hold of it and he's like Whoop. just grabs it and yanks oh, on it fuck. <laughs> and just pulls it so it did popped. he do that thing with the tape on the sides it popped this knuckle back in but <laughs> this was was broken and we still had probably was six hours to finish so that was that was a rough day for oh my, my god whole palm was like just swollen and you know so i've broken collarbones a couple times shoulders this hand. What was your worst things, so. crash? I think it was a long time back. I was probably 19, and I was trying to learn how to do stand-up wheelies. Mm -hmm. And so... That's one thing I never you know, fucked we're with. going pretty high speed and came off the back and just end over end on cartwheels. And that that's one of the times I broke my collarbone. Uh, and it, I don't know. It was, like, popped pretty good. But I jumped up real quick and raised my hand, and I just heard it go... Wow. And it was like just snapped. I'm surprised that's totally. all so, you broke. I am too. But it was pretty that's some good ones like that. And most of them the the crazy ones were when I first started riding from like eighteen, you know, twenty years old and super fearless and just learning how before oh, do whatever. <laughs> I'll jump out, yeah. So what have you had such a rad life like this, if you don't mind me asking, what made yeah. you lean into um, being addicted to drugs? So that's, it's hard. I don't really know. So Because you just seem like just such a gnarly, well-rounded person that would be like, would say no immediately if anyone well, it's ever weird offered because you. like through high school, I didn't do drugs or anything. <clears throat> I, I drank yeah. like towards the end there and like, and then right after high school, I got into weed a little bit. And then in one of the collarbone breaks, I had gotten a bottle of Vicodin and I didn't even use it for the break. But then maybe like a couple months later, I was partying with some friends. And he's like, oh, have you ever taken Viking in? I'm like, no, but I have a whole bottle of them. <laughs> and so he's like, oh, they're great. So we tried them out. And <clears throat> that bottle, the, at the time, the, there's five refills. I'm like, these are awesome. So we went through that whole thing within, you know, the next little bit. And it was later I got hooked on opiates is what, yeah. what ultimately That's did usually it. the so natural step. Pain pills, and then I got pretty heavy into that. And that started getting really expensive. And then I had a friend introduce me to cocaine. And 
I went in the bathroom, tried it, and walked out and thought, this is amazing. Like, whoa. Yeah. But then it was it wore off fast. I was like, oh, that was great. But like. 20 minutes, it's gone. It's like, wow, it's already over. So he's like, oh, you got to try math. I'm like, at this point, I'm kind of a spot where I'm like, Pocket, that sounds crazy, but I'm already doing it like yeah. for some reason. And got turned on to that. And there was just a two-year period of my life that I did that. And it was just totally And that was before you met your wife? This episode on In Sync with Reality is brought to you by AZ Board Source, your number one source to purchase cornhole boards, Connect Four, and other games that are made right here in the heart of Arizona in Mesa. They also make custom bags by Bagstar, B-A-G-S-T-A-R-R. If you'd like to see more information on pricing, delivery options as well, please go to AZ Board, B-O-A-R-D, Source, S O U R C E dot com or see them on Instagram at AZ Board Source and go ahead and check them out. So, yeah, before m- me and my wife met in high school, mm. we both were actually married prior. We both went to work and we. Oh, okay. So, when I got that's clean, crazy, you guys we, went to high school together. Yeah, it is pretty well. Oh, that's crazy. And, in, and what's funny is in high school, we would have never worked out. So, even if we would have. You know, it was I better was like this way on a path and she was like <laughs> holier than now. <laughs> and yeah. so it just would have never, never happened. And somewhere through our experience in life, she kind of was, I'm not, definitely not going down, but for her standards for where she was. Yeah. Doing she was things, and we kind of, we met right in the middle and just, it worked out really great. And we have, an awesome relationship like I, I know you guys are better, so, so cute that's just so uh, wild to me so that's why I was so, curious I was like if she knew you at that point yeah, so she so, met you after so it's funny the reason and how we met is so she had gotten divorced and she's hanging out with some mutual friends from high school and once I got clean I was kind of just back with my old friends and mm-hmm. we met that night oh hey cool like started hanging out and we just started hanging out every day from that point yeah but it's funny because at the time I felt like I had to tell everybody like, hey, you got to watch me. I'm, I'm a druggie. Like, <laughs> like, don't let me like, go in the bathroom yeah, alone. <laughs> like, so, or I just didn't want to get down the road and then she finds it and it's like, well. It's better to be so, honest, like right up front. So we hung out as a group the first night. And then the second night, me and her just hung out together. And I just kind of like. Word vomit. my guts on her. And yeah. at the time, I'm like living with my parents, right? Like, <laughs> She's like, this fucking guy. <laughs> she was like, what? <laughs> this like, is a lot of baggage. I don't know. Like. <laughs> And, it, and what's funny, I'm like, probably in that, because I've always, like, before, and it's a, it's a whole story, but before that, I was doing pretty well for my age, and my family's not well-to-do, so, like, for me, I in my early 20s, I was making 100 grand a year, and, like... Yeah, what were you doing? So, I got into dry cleaning with a friend, and we built this oh, business. Oh, was it doing, dry cleaning? Uh, <laughs> so, we know the dry cleaning yeah. stories. So, then it goes from there, yeah. and I'm a young kid making a lot of money, and a lot of money for me. Yeah, and I know what you mean. It's so, true. So, um, kind of from there, just spiraled out of control. But so I'm telling like this. But in my mind, as I've gotten clean, when I got clean and and got off drugs, it kind of, for me, I was like, hey, I'm gonna own a business. I'm gonna do this. So, so on one hand, I'm telling her, dude, I was homeless. I'm a total loser, druggie. And on the other hand, I'm telling her, hey, I'm gonna bounce back and I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna and, run and this she's business. Like, and she's like, huh? Like. Dude, I what don't the know hell about this? And she's like, "Yo, awesome, Never yeah, from her she's life." So like, sweet. And so, yeah, super sweet. And just like, I, I don't know about this. So it's kind of like, well, this is gonna think I just fucked this up. Well, it, for me, it was kind of like I was gonna put it out there, and if if she's not interested, if, she's not interested. Yeah, let's yeah. just let's just tear the bandaid off. Was she in college and or so anything she, like that? And so that's she, why she was. She, so at this point, she was out of college. But okay. Yeah. Um, I was probably 20, we're mid twenties okay. somewhere in that ballpark. So I can't imagine, but she's always, you know, to this day, so she's like, I don't know, just something, something resonated. She something, saw something in you. She saw something. Oh. And so now it's crazy. Like I said, 15 years later, That's we've been crazy. married That's for you know 13 and or 11 years, been together for the, and our kid, we have kids. Yeah. Like, I think you guys so started awesome, dating. So. The same year that Ryan and I started dating in oh, 09. Really? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I tried around that time. Yeah, because yeah. I was talking to her about something, and then I think something got brought up in Glamis about when you guys met, and I was like, that's crazy. Yeah, because Ryan and I have been together since 09. Oh, okay. Married yeah. in 2011, 
Um, so we're like right on that same path. Yeah, awesome. Man, things were so different back then too. There was so no different. outside influences. Social media was kind of a thing, but not really a thing. Like you just had the the drama, weird MySpace, and that was about it. And so since it was just our anniversary, we were talking about because I didn't have text messaging when we were dating. Yeah, like that's how long you know. Yeah, she's like, you didn't have text messaging. I'm like, yeah, that's weird, huh? I know. You know what? We had like blackberries. Oh, yeah. Then and I just had recently found and I don't even know how for how many times we've moved, but I found my old BlackBerry Pearl, oh, and I'm like, dude, if right. I can get into this, oh. yeah, right, because it has a password thing on there, and I'm like, I don't know what I used, yeah, but I would, dude, I'd pay money to see, see those what, text yeah, right? messages because <laughs> we had the remember the BBM thing, it was mm-hmm. kind of like text messages where you can have like a read receipt if they opened it and then oh. just didn't respond. Oh, that's when he started getting in trouble with me. Yeah. Just open that message and just not respond. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it was, just, it was a different time for sure. It wasn't time. texting was there, but it was not our main focus of talking. Yeah. It was definitely, Even just then, I'm still kind of like a straight forward. Just, just call me. If you want to, like, I love that. So I, my wife will be like, she'll mark a poll. Like, like, I'll be like, hey, ask so-and-so something. She'll like mark a poll them. And I'm like, just call him. Like, let's just get to the point. <laughs> Like what? <laughs> oh my god, but that's funny. I tech me and technology are like. No, I'm the worst. Yeah. I have to go to him all the time, Travis. Yeah. And uh, and Jackson, I literally, if something doesn't work, I'm like, help me. You guys are young. Fix this. That's how it is <laughs> for me at work. It's like. I can't do it. I'm the worst. Um, the biggest thing too, what I was gonna ask was, um, so you starting out at, um, Rally White. Mm-hmm. So how did you guys start? So we started, Brock, my partner, um, he owned, when I met him, and actually he and Bridget grew up together. Oh, okay. So that's how I met him. Okay. Um, he owned a small car lot in Mesa and sold used cars. And then I started working with him, um, buying cars myself and selling them. Mm-hmm. And then Tyler Rowley, a friend of ours was also doing the same thing. So we all three kind of worked together and Brock owned um, the actual dealership, dealer license and stuff. And so the idea was that we were all just going to break off and do our own dealership and our own thing. Mm -hmm. And we started renting toy haulers, Brock and I. um, And I think we sold one of the toy haulers and I was like. So you were renting them, but (laughs) didn't own them just yet. Yeah, so we, like, Brock owned one, and then we had one that we rented out. Oh, okay. And so we were renting them out, but not buying and selling at all, just cars. Okay. And through that, we kind of, I think we sold one, and it was like, oh, that was awesome. And I remember mm-hmm. the first toy haul I've ever sold was like, so I've been selling cars, and they're not cars you want. They're like 10000 or under. Yeah. You, you have to have it. And yeah. <laughs> It's like you're like, probably desperate if you're yeah, coming to me. If you're buying this car, like you don't you don't want it, you need it. Was that here in the so, valley? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. here in Arizona. Cool. So then with the trailers, I went and met this family, and they had the whole family there. And the kids were like, I want this book, and like everybody was excited. They're gonna go camping and make all these family memories. And oh, it was like it's a good feeling. This was way nicer. Like so Oh, because when people are coming in to buy a car, I, yeah. I came from the auto industry too. Oh, okay. Bef- yeah. When the and then the world crashed in 09 and yeah. I lost my job. Oh yeah. But damn. Mm-hmm. They just hate you. Hate you. I'm without even meeting you, I'm already ripping you. I'm you hate me. Like, you're already the bad I'm guy. The scumbag. It's crazy. <laughs> and then the trailer, you're the hero. You are. And so it was great. So it kind of evolved from there. And then we started selling more trailers. And it was kind of just the, we were selling trailers out of backyards, most like Tyler's dad's house, Brock's. And so we'd have like two or three and be like, yeah. oh, you don't like this one? Come look at this one. Perfect. And then, Let's go drive over to Head's yeah. house. <laughs> and so then, yeah. And then Brock and Tyler bought our Mesa a lot that we have now. Okay. And we moved over there and thought, do we have so much room? This is amazing. I know. You and know? now like, you're running out of room all yeah, the time yeah. there. So <laughs> from that point, it just kind of, we would still only have like five to 10 trailers, you know, and they were all used. Mm-hmm. And so we'd fix them up, put them out for sale, and they would all sell like that week. And then we would have zero, nothing. So we had to go California, go scour, try to find more. We'd bring them back, fix them up, 
sell them and just kind of repeat that process for a good two years. Damn. And then some of these require like a lot of work. I've seen used trailers uh, come in. I'm like, Jesus, yeah. especially weekend warriors. Oh my God. Uh, it's you wouldn't believe the stuff I've seen. <laughs> Those things are beat to shit. Every yeah, time. It's unreal. So and do you guys start out with travel trailers first or was it just all a mix of things? So generally it was, it was toy haulers okay. and we've always just been kind of focused on that. We're, you know, like with the dirt bikes that with, Rocks a hunter and with all the stuff that it just kind of it fits our lifestyle anyway so it's just kind of a natural fit mm -hmm. and it worked out really well for us and then nice. from there we got new and we just kind of kept growing especially if you guys were already in kind of in the desert scene that's pretty much what everybody's just looking for anyway yeah so it kind of made a really <laughs> good transition for that and so it's it's been awesome because just like the motorcycle thing like i was talking about like oh you ride motorcycle oh we're friends like Mm -hmm. It's a, at work like I don't really it's work and it's been hard work to get where we're at and it's it's been lots of ups and downs but generally I look at like our customers are our friends we're going out camping with them they're yeah. we're Camp into the Genesis same, yeah. is the shit it's yeah. amazing <laughs> yeah so we're all doing the same stuff so we all have this common bond of camping and being out in desert and family and so it, it a lot of our customers just become friends and yeah you know so. It's, it's been really cool that way. So taking to the next step to where you guys are at now with Genesis, did you guys just became one of their like main dealers? Like how did that conversation start or how did that work out? So there's a show in California every year that it's put on by manufacturers and it was Genesis first year in, of them building. So um, Brock and Tyler went over there and they saw it and they brought back some brochures and like, oh, let's so at this point, we weren't, we we started used, and a lot of the new, the manufacturers wouldn't take us on. They're like, eh, like, our offices aren't pretty. It's not like, you know, so it's kind of like. Listen, I like that trailer. Don't get, let them get it. you down. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but we got a break with um, Eclipse, and Kevin was the a new rep there, and we they, they wouldn't give us attitude, but they gave us Stellar, which was like, yeah, it's fine. That's what we had. We were like, cool. Well, yeah, because that's we'll, the same one by we'll Forest take, River, right? Take whatever, uh, Eclipse. Yeah. Yep. So then it was like, cool, we'll take that. And in that first year, we made Stellar, which is supposedly like the stepchild to the Attitude. We took that <laughs> trailer, made it number, it was number one trailer in Arizona that first year that we had it. Yeah, which that was, was a, awesome. Those are good so models. From that point, we started gaining traction there. And then Genesis came out, we took on Genesis, and we became their number one dealer. And from there, Phoenix, Flagstaff. I, I mean, we've just been growing over the last six years, you know, or whatever. Yeah. So, and doing different things. I so. always forget the Flagstaff one. I would, I would how does that one look? Is it all like log cabin -y up there? No, it'd be sweet <laughs> if it was. But, no. Still just building. A yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's so uh, cool. What made you guys open the one in uh, Idaho? So, Idaho came along kind of, there were, there's the, so we have partners up there, two other guys, Blaine and Dave, and they own a car lot, but they had a bunch of extra, they had like three extra acres and they were mm -hmm. trying to figure out what to do with it. And they were talking about doing storage or doing this or doing that. And um, my partner, Brock, it's like, dude, we should, let's start a dealership up there, you know, try that out and just try it out. It's not gonna, really, we're just taking up the space, you know, and it had a little office. So we kind of, so yeah, let's try it. So we, we put the dealership up there and then it, it was doing pretty well. Uh, it can, it's a, we're in the third year. This will be going into the third season and it's done well. And this, this past summer, we just bought out the car lot and bought the whole property and took over the whole main building and stuff. That's so, so crazy. Yeah. How so. did uh, 2020 affect you guys? 2020 was weird. It, like when it first happened and everything just froze, mm -hmm. there was, you know, a two week period, probably two and a half weeks and we didn't sell a single thing. It was kind of like, huh. This is kind of weird. This is definitely weird. It was for everybody. Yeah. But then it sure. just took off, especially RVs. Everybody wanted, yeah. like, it was a crazy time. Yeah, you definitely had, homes, right? like, yeah, it was crazy. Everyone did the freak out for two weeks when they were like, hey, you can't go into any buildings. And you're like, what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was in Scottsdale when that happened. I was literally walking out of a store and they were like, um, we have to close. I'm like, why? 
<laughs> yeah. And they're like, um, the city's shutting everyone down. You have to go home. And I was like, so confused. So I'm just not yeah. a news person. I mean, yeah, of course I heard about COVID. I didn't give a shit. I, not that I didn't give a shit, but I survived swine flu and that was for horrific for me. And yeah. I was like, eh. yeah. I can't believe we're doing this because swine flu didn't really do any of that. And that killed a lot of people. And um, so for me, it was the same thing. Like two weeks of just, yeah. the fuck. Yeah, it was just a really weird time, especially when we're used to being so busy and things moving mm -hmm. at a really fast <clears throat> pace. Um, it was just kind of like, well, is this it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> what, and then it just took off because, I mean, obviously a big part of everything was closed down, so people were using chairs, but then they weren't building them, so... You had that supply issue. There was a, a supply issue. So everybody's like, oh, you guys must have killed it. And it's like, well, I mean, if we had product, yes, we definitely would have. But we didn't really, like, sell more. We just sold what you had. But it was a different selling ball game. It wasn't like we really had to do anything. It was like, I'll take it. I'll take it. Yeah. We need it. We need it now. You didn't have to worry right about now. crunching numbers and doing it all that. It was just like... <clears throat> let's go mm -hmm. i'll take it yeah i want it. i want it it's like wow that's crazy like, yeah so never seen anything like that I, now, this last year is just totally different it's just we're down way down and just kind of figuring out new ways to get back in there yeah i know um introduced you to nick so yeah. doing the yeah yeah that would be cool to do the Matterport type of, you know, yeah, walkthroughs yeah. and stuff. Yeah, he does my houses. And it's it's definitely, it's a good way to bring out your out-of-state clients. Because actually today, I got a Facebook message from a customer that has a deposit on a trailer oh. from your dealership. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, awesome. It's so weird. I guess him and Ryan have been talking and somehow oh. he messaged me a question about our trailer that we have, that we got from you. And he lives in Ohio. Oh, Sweet. And he's like, yeah, I have a deposit down. I'm really excited. I guess it's like this almost exactly the same thing what we have. Oh, okay. So yeah. he was asking us a bunch of questions and stuff. And I was like, dude, that's so crazy. But if you think about it, you know, a lot of people probably are um, coming from out of state. But then I was like kind of thinking like, wouldn't Idaho be closer? <laughs> yeah. Mesa? Yeah. But sometimes it depends on models and stuff. Yeah, like I'm sure it probably just didn't have one. But yeah, he's going to fly out here soon, I guess some point i'll have to show you his name and see yeah. if you know who it is yeah, for sure. um but yeah i mean like literally on social media like you are definitely have a huge following of people not just in our state and that's what's so cool is you know once you say the name rowley white everybody knows like who rowley white is and your trailers and your product and like what you guys deliver and stuff i don't think anyone who camps or like goes out you know to the dunes or whatever doesn't know about you guys and That's, i think you guys have done a very very good job at that i appreciate that because from our side of the table we don't look at it that way you know so when you hear it, it's like oh, that's awesome it's super humbling and yeah I appreciate it's, it you know it's definitely you're you're noticed um you know what i think it is is because you you go to the events like you guys don't just sit back and just sell the trailers you you go to the trips um in the dunes you're like you go out and camp you go to the you know up in the mountains or whatever it's like you guys do that stuff with your employees and i think that's what kind of set you guys apart from just joe's shows you know trailer place is because your faces and your brand is out in the public places where people go and camp yeah and some that i found and we didn't know we were doing it it's just something that naturally happened because none of us are from the rv business or it, like i said we did a car it just yeah. kind of fell in our lap and <clears throat> is our service side of it and making sure that you're going camping whatever that takes we want to make sure that you're out there using it and mm -hmm. that if you need a part or you have a product like, and it's really just was phone calls to us where somebody calls in in the very beginning i can remember i got a phone call from a guy and he was like i just bought this new trailer and my water pump doesn't work and i'm at he's at roosevelt like, lake <laughs> and it's like and in my head my response was like oh that sucks. Like, <laughs> I don't, that would hate it to have, like, to me, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so I'm like, oh, what a bummer. So we don't have, like, a process where, like, well, you got to do, like, it's evolved into that. But at that time, I was like, dude, well, I, like, I can't leave here until 6, but I'll be there tonight and I'll fix your trailer for you. Like, this is a bummer. He's like, yeah, whatever. Like, 
And then you actually show up. Show up. I water pump, like fix this trailer. And it was crazy because like And Roosevelt, the, just for people who don't know, Roosevelt's not a close trip. Like yeah, that's over an hour. <laughs> yeah, so working all day and then we go do that. But it wasn't I wasn't doing it. It's I genuinely felt bad. Like that would suck. Like mm-hmm. that's a bummer. Like you bought this trailer. It's expensive to take your fan and it's not working. Like what? Yeah. That would bum me out. So, too. you know, we try to and there's stuff that we just can't do, but we try to do everything that we possibly can on that side of it. And that's what most of my meetings and most of the things that I talk about with the guys, I, I don't even focus on sales really at all. It's more focusing on customer service and everything make sure else. that we're taking care of if they have a problem. Like if somebody has a problem, like say you have 20 problems with your trailer, it's like mm-hmm. but you're going camping for the holiday. It's like, well, which one's keeping you like say it's your water here doesn't work. It's like, We'll bring it in. We're going to fix that right now. Yeah, but if we it's want just you a light bulb. And like yeah. The cosmetic stuff, we'll have to schedule you. But, like, we want to make sure you're at least out using it and making those memories of family and enjoying. I definitely have a good example for what you guys did for us. So I don't know why, but so everything in this model that we have now works fine. Like, it's great. I have no complaints, although we did shatter our own glass thing. But you know what? That was our own fault. Our yeah. shower door. Yeah. 100% our fault. Oh. <laughs> Not you guys. But the fart fan in there, just, and I call it that. I'm sure there's some fancy term. I just love calling it that, so I don't That's care. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Had gone out like twice. And of course, it's not, like you said, it's not detrimental. Like we're not like killing the trip over that. Yeah. But you know what? Sometimes Ryan, after breakfast, just blows that thing up and I'm, <laughs> he's going to kill me for this. That's awesome. <laughs> And we called one of your guys in Glamis about it. It happened that one of your texts was out there. I forgot who it was. I'm sure Ryan remembers. But, yeah, he came and fixed it. Wow. And we told him exactly where we were camping at, and he came. He was like, I'm literally in Glamis right now. I'll come. Yeah. Which spot awesome. are you guys at? Came, and he fixed it. It did end up breaking again, but it was funny because I think it was Ryan hitting too many buttons. Because yeah, yeah. we have the fancier one where there's, like, a lot of buttons and it's a remote. It's not just the easy one. Sure punch thing but we were joking and laughing and we were like we feel so silly calling and bothering you guys for this but i sure shit literally we're in glamis and we called again and the guy literally showed up and then fixed it and i was laughing because if you go to any other dealership rv dealership and buy an, that that is a hundred percent not happening for you but yeah. the fact that your guys are always in glamis all the time and a lot of the times that we're already there too is the best part about that because when stupid shit or something major happens we ended up having a, a, a couple that came with us as well, and they had a trailer from you guys as well, and they were having a major issue with their generator. Um, but it was fixed literally the same day. We yeah. had a guy come over. They knew exactly where we were already camping anyways. Um, I think you guys were out there that weekend too, and literally yeah. it was fixed. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, and yeah. it's just it's service like that that will not happen with any other dealership. I and I think you guys that. have been holding strong on letting everyone know, like you're it, a lot of manufacturing things are obviously out of your control. You're literally just the middleman. So like, it's not your fault. It's not all this piece of shit trailer, or whatever. It's literally not your fault. But the fact that you guys, even though it's not your actual built there, like your real product, you still make sure that once it leaves the dealership, I'm going to make sure you still have a good time. Yeah, appreciate that. That your fridge works and everything works and you guys have a good time and your kids are smiling and although kids are not always smiling. (laughs) Again, not out of of your control. (laughs) Same problem. (laughs) Now, the trailer that you have, okay, I might have been a little drunk, but did the whole damn side open up on the front? (laughs) So we have a couple I was like, is that a thing like that? We have one that we built four shows it, it the whole front out, opens whole front opens into a patio and that was the TV. wildest thing i was like making sure i wasn't drunk when i saw no, yeah no yeah <laughs> so then i put salad on so we can watch supercross at the yeah. dunes and stuff like that yeah. that was the yeah. coolest thing i had experienced when i walked up to your camp and i was like damn you guys are just shitting on us holy <laughs> holy crap this oh. is the setup was amazing and just the type of different type of um, trailers that you see at Camp Genesis were awesome. Oh, yeah. I love yeah. that you when you guys do Camp Genesis that um, everybody brings their different type of trailers and you literally can just freely walk into them yeah. and check it out. Yeah. And it's a great customer experience, too, because sometimes people just don't know. They want to see not only on a lot, but they want to see it out in the real world. 
Yep. And how does this thing handle? And how does this thing look when it's out here? How do you load? Is there a trick to this? And things like that, that you guys literally have that dynamic already set up. Yep. And it's perfect for customers. Um, I mean, it's been many times where I'm like, Ryan, we are fine with what we have. And he's like, no, we are not. <laughs> Did you see that one? <laughs> That's awesome. Well, it's good to hear feedback like that. So yeah. not like, no, I'm yeah. like literally... It's, it's funny, we were like your cheerleaders and stuff, but I feel like now we don't even need to be anymore because I feel like more people, like we've had more times than not been approached in the dunes. Oh, hey man, I know you guys have, you know, Rally White, like I've got this one question, what do you guys think? And like that has happened more than like not now. And I laughed and I told Ryan, I was like... <laughs> I feel like you're like Brad's little salesman now, yeah. <laughs> like so out there. I gave him some flags for your car, right? And you guys put them on a car. Dude. And Ryan was telling me, he's like, oh, so I saw you guys out there. And he's like, dude, everybody <laughs> wants me to fix their trailer. I'm like, oh, yeah, <laughs> just like, guaranteed. Literally, he'll be just standing there just drinking a beer. And he's like getting approached by these random people. And he's yeah. like, hi. And they're yeah. like, so I got a question. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm just laughing in the background. They're like, okay, what do you think about this model versus this model? Okay, well, I have this. And I'm like. <laughs> That's awesome. Yep. But, like, it happens all the time now. And, and honestly, he's genuinely happy to help and stuff. And just because we have owned different models. So at least we have some sort of experience on knowing which is better than most. Yeah, no, um, I mean, we appreciate it. Like, you guys are awesome. And yeah. Appreciate it. No, we appreciate you. You guys have always been awesome. Your family's amazing. And it's funny that. Um, we do have something else in oh, common yeah. yes. that uh, I had to bring up that we've got you on the obsession train of hairless cats. You have, <laughs> and it's changed our life. So Isn't it I wild? don't like cats, and I'll <gasps> freely say that. And my wife has wanted one of these for uh, years, anyway. Mm -hmm. And I saw your when you guys got yours on Instagram, and I made the mistake of showing her. <laughs> <laughs> which I don't know why I did that. Look what you've done. Yeah. And then it was like, it was on from that point. And the, I was still holding strong, not yeah. happening. And oh, yeah. Ryan, too. I ran into Ryan um, at some show, and we sat down. And he's like, dude, cat's pretty cool. <laughs> it fetches. <laughs> it's more like a dog. Like, yeah. I love it. And so then. And I think this is getting close to Christmas time, and I'm always the worst with like gifts and stuff. And oh, that's it's like the if one I can like perfect. think some that my wife has been wanting or likes, and it's like, oh, that's yeah. so I was like, oh, cool. I've accepted that we are getting this cat, like a cat, mm -hmm. and then she got it, and it's totally changed the dynamic of our home. Like yeah, kids are love it. I love it, which is crazy. Every morning I wake up early. I you have, have the same routine. Like, she'll run and she like waits on the armrest of the chair that I sit in, and then I sit down, and then she gets in my lap, and it's just it's awesome. So. They're just different type of animals, yeah. and I know a lot of people hate on them. I'm like, until you own one, you have no idea mm -hmm. how different they truly, truly are, and how much of an impact they are on your life. It's it's crazy because I never thought I would say that. I mean, I love my dogs to death. Like my dogs are like my ride or dies, but like this damn cat runs my fucking household. It does. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's crazy. And for how many times I've had to save that cat from the strangles of my child running down the stairs. And I'm like, oh, you can't do that. <laughs> my kids will pick it up and you hear a weird noise. Like, I don't think she wants you to hold her. <laughs> yeah. No, she loves it. Yeah, and it's like, <laughs> yeah, he puts up with the shit most of the times. I mean, he lets off like the little sound every now and then of like, okay, bitch, I'm done. Yeah. And that's what we love about him, that he just has that personality too of like, okay, I've had enough. We're done. Yeah, we're done. Oh. No more pets. <laughs> yeah, Coco does. Coco swiped Carter pretty good and got him across oh, the yeah. face. And I'm like, well, I mean. What did you do? <laughs> yeah. That's your fault. We never get mad at the cat. Yeah, right? it's never the cat's <laughs> no. fault. And it's funny, um, Franklin has the same routine with Ryan. He gets up, and he goes immediately into our walk-in closet. Yeah. And he sits there, and he waits until Ryan's on to his next station, in his oh, next room. Yeah. He literally follows him all the way down the stairs, and then Ryan has to fill his bowl, because his bowl's down there. And then he'll, like, munch, munch, munch for, like, two minutes. And then he goes and follows him in the kitchen and waits yeah. until he's about to leave. And then he'll sit on the step, the last step next to the door, and watch him walk out the door. And it's like, I'll see it sometimes on the camera. It's just the cutest fucking thing. And it's so funny. I mean, dogs are very loyal, too. And trust me, they like to follow me around. But it's just so different. They just don't do that. Yeah, it's it's different. And 
even when we're like on, it's funny because we go if we go out of town or we're gone for the whole car is like, can't wait to see Coco. We miss Coco. Everybody just wants <laughs> yeah. to get home to see Coco. Yeah. <laughs> it's not about you like, anymore. We just, me and Bridget went on a trip and on our way home, like our kids didn't come with us, and she's like, I can't wait. I miss Coco. I miss Coco. I'm like, we have we have kids. <laughs> No, like, they no. want to go. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're the same way. When we've had a hard day at work, I mean, same thing, man. Dude, we love our kids. We love the dogs. But something about the purring, too. It's just so no. soothing when they see you and they're purring. Damn, it fucking gets you every I, time. I feel funny even talking about this. <laughs> That's added to the one-minute clip, by the way, Travis. <laughs> 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 yeah, I... God, it's it's a crazy obsession that we have. And it's funny, when Ryan's having a really bad day, he's like, all I really want is my cat. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. And yeah. he'll defend them to the death, like, yeah. of people of, like, oh, that's fucking weird. They're fucking ugly. I don't like them. And blah. and he's like, you don't get it. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I was one of those people. Like, yeah. That's it's fucking weird. Uh, yeah. But she's soft, too, like ours, right? She is, yeah. yeah super yeah, velvety. Her, and, mm -hmm. yeah, there's some out there that are not like that. And, and that I makes a difference. And I being nice, or, but when they see her in person, like, oh, she's actually really cute. And, like, yeah. not what I thought. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, she's pretty sweet. Yeah, I get that reaction a lot, too, where they go, shit, I didn't think he was going to feel like that. Or I yeah. thought he was going to feel different. And I'm like, no, he's, like, fucking velour fucking pants. Like, very yeah. soft and velvety. Yeah. Yeah. Super cute. I pick cute. her up whenever I go home. She's rubs and <laughs> rubs in my beard and travis don't you fucking shake your head over there yeah. you know you fucking play you with franklin too <laughs> he travis sends me selfies with that cat <laughs> oh yeah my phone's full of pictures of <laughs> i think i have more franklin photos in my phone than my kids <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> more than like houses or like anything else in yeah. my phone it's definitely fucking franklin <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> they're amazing animals well, I don't want to keep you too much, and I know we got both family and kids, so I really wanted to thank you for coming on and talking a little bit about your life. I definitely, however, would love to have you back with G. Oh. I think yep. that would be a good one, for sure. Awesome. So this could be like a little teaser onto a prelude of there we go. the next chapter to talk. Well, I appreciate you having me. No problem. Yep. All right. Till next time. Bye.